So I've just arrived at the McLaren Technology Facility and they are going to showcase their brand new GT car to a bunch of selected people. I guess there'll be hundreds of people in there. But it's the first McLaren GT car and since I like GTs, a friend of mine invited me here. Let's see what it's like. They sent me a long email saying no photography and uh, no phones. So I won't be able to show you anything, but I can at least come back and tell you what I think of it. Because it's their first GT car, hopefully it will be very interesting. Okay, I am back. The car park is full of all kinds of interesting cars of all varieties. Right, so what do I think of the new McLaren GT? First of all, the good stuff. It's very elegant. It's very beautiful. The line, the shapes, everything is lovely. There is the interior leather, which is fantastic. It feels like the Aston Martin. That's one thing I love about the Astons. You sit inside and you have suede on the ceiling and amazing, very good quality leather. So that I found very interesting. It's very clean very very beautiful the color scheme is very nice and uh, I guess the two-toning they've done they've chosen sort of saddle brown leather with beige leather and all white creamy leather they've created some boot space inside the car behind the rear seats so it's not a four-seater or even two plus two it's definitely a two-seater car with uh, some boot space. The front boot is bigger than the Porsche 911 um, and then you have a little bit of storage space on the back parcel shelf where you can put soft bags and things. It is a 4 litre twin turbo 600 something brake horsepower car. The one thing that I find quite strange They've kept their doors that open up and that is something you have to understand for a GT car. You're going to go to the south of France, to Paris. Most of the French car parks are really narrow. You can barely get out of these normal cars with the normal doors. So I don't know how anyone would get out of those. They go up to 190. Um, centimeters which means that in some car parks when you open your door it will probably hit the roof especially in Monaco I think the height wouldn't be a problem but opening doors because the car parks are extremely narrow or parking spaces rather um, so yeah it's overall a beautiful car uh, they said a well-specced car would cost about £195,000. I think for a two-seater GT that doesn't have a lot of storage space and I don't know, maybe a bit too expensive. I think it's probably going to start at 160 or something and obviously these cars, they're not designed for everyone. and. Not even, I mean, I love cars, but I don't think it's a car for me because it's even though it's supposed to be a GT car, it's quite impractical. Um, 
Also, I was hoping that they would change the rear end of the car, make it look a bit more elegant and sedate rather than making it look the standard sporty with the honeycomb mesh that's still there. So the rear end of the car is like every other McLaren, the front end is slightly different, but it looks like just a normal McLaren with cleaner lines and some storage space. So, but it was a nice presentation, people were very friendly and uh, overall I think people who are existing McLaren customers will definitely be interested. I don't know how many McLaren owners actually buy McLarens to do long road trips or they just buy it as a normal sports car that they can go around the tracks very fast and who knows. I've never owned a McLaren and I don't know if I ever will. I'm too old for this kind of a car for me. A sedate, simple, understated looking GT car like an Aston Martin or a Porsche I suppose although recently I've been quite interested in the Ferrari F12s they look very nice but they're a bit I don't know screaming cars loud cars and uh, but I do love the GTC4 Lusso and the uh, FFs, they are really nice cars and hopefully maybe one day I might get one. It's like a Marmite car where people say you either love it or hate it. I just love that sort of a shooting brake look of the FF and the GTC4 Lusso and the rear seats are really comfortable. Uh, you can put them down and make even more storage space. Um, they sound good and I don't know, it just doesn't look like a normal sporty car, it looks more like a GT car, which is why I think I like them. So yeah, this is my little quick video about the McLaren GT. Um, once they release it to the wider public, I'm sure you'll be able to see lots of pictures and reviews and um, they'll invite the real YouTubers uh, to, do te to do their tests and drive those cars. People like me who are nobodies don't get to test ride their cars unless I'm planning to buy one. I don't want to go waste some dealer's time if I'm not interested in the car and I don't think I'll ever buy it. But who knows, maybe I'll win the lottery and I'll decide that I have spare money to throw around to buy a car that I might drive once a month. Let's switch on the exhaust and manual. I think I need to do this a little more. What's the point of making a car video if you're not going to make your car scream? The naturally aspirated V12. This is a beauty. difference between the Porsche and the Aston. 
whenever you're in the Aston, you get a thumbs up and people smile and they let you go if you're coming out of a side road or stuck in traffic. If you're in the Porsche, people give you evil looks. And I'm the same person. It's just bizarre how one car commands respect and the other one commands abuse. I'm a very good driver. I am very considerate of other road users. I don't do anything to create road rage. I'm really good, but don't get the respect in the Porsche, but in the Aston.